I am Maria Loy, executive chef of Loy's Theatorio in Manhattan. When I was growing up in Thermo, a small village in Greece, food was a way of life. Good for your body, good for your soul. The Mediterranean diet is considered one of the healthiest in the world. And I have seen how it can truly change people's lives, like it changed mine. And since then, my life has been all about the Mediterranean diet. Today, we are going to share some of the delicious secrets that you can make part of your own lives at home. I will be joined in the live chat with my friend, Dr. Stefanos Kalles, expert on the health benefits of the Mediterranean diet. We know the Mediterranean diet protects you from cancer. This has a 5,000 year safety record. We are here to answer all of your questions. So come with me right now on The Life of Loy. I am Maria Loy. I am happy you are joining me today. Welcome back. I will take you on a trip to Greece and then come back to my kitchen in New York to show you two recipes I love. Dragano Solomo, crispy skin salmon and garides me kritharaki, shrimp with orzo. Today, it's all about seafood. For thousands of years, seafood was the main source of animal protein consumed in Greece. Look at any map, and it's easy to see why. Greece is surrounded by water and a buffet of seafood. Sardines, branzino, octopus, calamari, sea urchin. Seafood was, and still is, such an important part of the Greek economy. It's the country's second largest agricultural export, ranking above even olive oil. Lucky for us, it's also incredibly healthy. Seafood is the single best source of omega-3 fatty acids. I am taking you to a place close to my heart for this seafood feast, a hotel that I have been going to since I was in my 30s. Usually, I would go not just to swim, but to work out as well. After exercising, I would sneak into the kitchen to check what they were cooking. It's in my blood. I couldn't resist. Astir Palace is a very special place, not just for me, but for many famous people, like President Barack Obama, Paul Newman, Frank Sinatra, Lady Gaga, to name a few. Come with me. Pame! We are here with Bertrand Valerjas. We're going to do fish today, right? Yes, fish. Yep. What kind of fish? So it's a doha today, a doha do. Tsipura. Tsipura, ex exactly. Okay. Tsipura, yes. Th that's what we have to do. Yes. And it comes from the Greek sea. So it's a Greek fish. Just behind us. <laughs> he knows where they swim, you know, like. Exa exactly. We track them uh, every night before we catch them. How are we going to cook this fish today? So today we will cook the fish in a paper. Uh, mm -hmm. Parchment paper? In a parchment paper, yes. So we will cook uh, with all the different products that we have from our garden. Fennel, different cherry tomatoes, lemon, uh, fresh oregan, fresh thyme, uh, fresh onion, olives, Greek of course, and zucchini. Mm -hmm. So we will melange all of these ingredients with the fish, with olive oil, with a little bit of uh, a white wine, of a chipuro. Wow! I'm doing this only for you, the chipuro. Thank you. So we start? Mm -hmm. You want some olive oil? Yes, if Greek you just... Olive oil. Yeah, yes. of course. Uh -huh. So we will put the fish. Uh -huh. So beautiful fish. Look the eyes. Yes. Yesterday night it was still uh, enjoying the nice uh, <laughs> Greek sea. <laughs> okay. So we will just start to add some olives. We need to give flavor to this fish. So a little bit of... That scallion. Scallion, spring onion. Yeah. And you can have spring onion in Greece, you know, like all the time. All the time. Yes. All the time. We will take the fennel. It's uh, shaved, right? Shaved, yeah. Very, yeah. very thin because the fennel, it needs some time to cook. So we, 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 we shave it very thin. 
-hmm. so it will cook fast uh, with, with the fish. Oh, that's another secret. You can eat it as a salad as well, the fennel, you know. You add whatever you want. Greek olive oil, extra virgin, of course. Extra virgin. Lemon juice, and that's it. So We will add chili mm -hmm. tomato. So now we continue with the zucchini. Mm -hmm. So now we will add some few slices of lemon, mm -hmm. a little bit inside as well. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. nice, we will, we will put the herbs as well in, in, inside the belly of the fish to give a little bit more... Flavor. More flavor, ex exactly. And now we will add some fresh thyme, a little bit of fresh oregano. It's amazing, the fresh uh, oregano. It gives you a flavor, a color. Okay. So we will add a little bit of white wine, wine now. Okay. The dry uh, white yeah. wine. Oop. Of course it's Greek, huh? Uh, of <laughs> Come on, I know you're it's, French. It's, it's, it's not French, no, it's Greek, it's Greek, yeah. Good. And the poisson. Yes. And now we will finish with the uh, chipuro. They say it's a Greek grappa, but no. It's better. Uh, definitely. Good. And now we will finish. With the sea salt. With the sea salt, yes. In France, you call it fleur de sel. Fleur de sel, exactly. Good. Pepper? Exactly. Now we will close it. I want to see that, how to do the French papillote. The very important mm -hmm. part of the papillote, you need to be closed very, very well. You will keep all the aroma inside. Here, 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 it's going to go out. Oh, it's going out, you see, you see. <laughs> Bertrand, you know how we call the papillot, you know, in, uh, in Greece? Still la docola. La docola. La docola. Psy, still la docola. <laughs> he has a good accent for a French chef. <laughs> for, for a French, you see. <laughs> and now we will put in our plate, we will cook in the oven for uh, 25 minutes, approximately, 220 degrees. And then we eat it. So good. Look at this. Yes. So now we will clean a little bit the fish. Yeah. Oh, and look at the lemon here. See? Yeah, exactly. The smell is amazing. Just add a little bit of salt. Okay. And a little bit of pepper. My father used to tell me, you don't need to add a lot of lemon in the fish. You just eat a bit of fresh pepper and then you will realize how the fish is fresh or not. Exactly. May I do something too? Okay. And now, Kaliorexi. Kaliorexi. We will enjoy your creation. Thank you. And really thank you. Very good. I think people are jealous now. I, I think so, yes. Right? Yes. Remember, we are here to answer your questions live. So ask away. There's nothing like cooking outside by the seaside in Greece, especially when you cook with Chef Bert Hag. And the good thing about this recipe is that it's very adaptable. You can use almost any kind of fish any herbs, any vegetables you like. I love branzino, but I love salmon as well. Let me show you how to make this dish with the crispiest salmon skin. First of all, check the skin, okay? To see if it's shiny and it looks metallic, not gray or dull, to make sure the fish is fresh. I will turn this on and I will add my olive oil. It needs to be a bit hot, the olive oil. And also, you have to pat dry your salmon, okay? And actually what I'm doing, I have another paper towel because this one is wet already. So I take it like this and I put it here. 
because if you have water, you know, on your salmon, it's not going to become crispy. See, the olive oil is hot now, and I can put my salmon. I have my salmon glow. That's how I call it. I put it skin down. And you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the skin is not going to split and it's going to be beautiful crispy. People, they go like this, okay, and check all the time. The fish is telling you when it's ready to turn. See, it moves like it's in the ocean. You see, now you can see how crispy your salmon is, okay? Now, you can just turn it. Okay. When it comes to choosing salmon, the first question is always, wild or farm? When it's wild, there's no guarantee where your fish was swimming, what it has eaten or been exposed to, like mercury. I love wild fish, but wild is not always better. If you're buying farmed salmon, you have to be careful as well to make sure that the fish is sustainably and ethically raised and farmed, and they don't use antibiotics or coloring. Make sure it's organic. While my salmon slowly cooked, okay, I'm going to show you how to make the extras, as we call it in Greece. Okay, you can add some tomatoes, olives. Do you know olives? They have polyphenols. Actually, you need only five olives per day to have your polyphenols that you need. Time. When I was a kid, my mom, she was adding time to the bath water when we were taking a bath. And uh, she was telling us it's very good for your skin. Let me add some lemon. Fish and lemon goes together. Marathos. Fennel in Greek is marathos. And you can find marathos all over Greece, but especially in Marathon City, where actually the marathon race started. And that's uh, from marathos got their name, marathonas. So marathos will use the fonts. But also, as I say, I said not the bulb, I said the body. It's very licorice. Some salt, oregano, olive oil, fresh pepper, and then we'll make it like a papillot. My chef Felipe is turning the papillot like this, and he's putting this on the plate. It's so easy. I will add some water so you don't burn the paper, and also steams at the same time. Some more olive oil. So I add the olive oil because it lacks all the flavors in there. It's an extra skin. So this one needs 400 degrees preheated oven. It needs only three, four minutes, no more. You don't need to cook a lot with vegetables. 
Okay. Here we are. See? Ready. And now it's time to serve it. I'm going to plate all my favorite vegetables here. Olives, lemon, thyme. And then I'm going to add to the top my salmon. See? Mine it's different color. It's very pinkish because I want it almost well done. Other people, they want it raw. It's a matter of taste. Olive oil. See the skin? Salmon skin has even more omega-3 fatty acids than the fish itself. Even, <laughs> even salmon needs an extra coat of fat to stay warm in the ocean. Tomato, fennel, maratho, an olive, and yasu. Mmm. It's all crunchy. Oh, yeah, a bit more of salmon. Mmm. Chef Bertrand had another delicious seafood recipe to show me with lagustine. Lagustine is related to the lobster. It's also known as the Norway lobster or Dublin bay prawn or caravides, as we say in Greece. The first time I had lagustine, I was 10 years old. They were so sweet and succulent. I became obsessed ever since. But when I was 20 years old, I developed a shellfish allergy. And when I was about 30 years old, I grew out of it. <laughs> Thank goodness. Let's head back to Athens. Pame. Yasu. Today, we're going to cook a very Greek specialty. Karafides me krytharaki. How do you call it, chef? Langoustine with ozo. So, we will need some onion, some fresh tomato, the orzo pasta, of course, fresh um, oregano for the langoustine later, some lime, lime uh, chives, a wonderful uh, cheese from Naxos. And for, for the orzo, we will, we will use some um, bisque. With the head of the, of the langoustine, we are yeah. doing the, the, bisque, the, yeah. the, the juice, the bisque, uh, with onion, carrots, tomato, olive oil, of course. We cook this all together, and we have this beautiful uh, juice. Everything what we are serving here is coming from almost 50 to 100 kilometers around us. Vegetable, the food, the fish, etc. Everything is coming around us. We are trying to be really focused on the. Sustainable. And sustainability, yes. So first we will start with, uh, with the orzo pasta because this is what it will take a little bit more, uh, more time. A little bit of olive oil, of course. And we will start with the onion. The onion. So a little bit of tomato. So the orzo pasta, it will, it, we will cook it similar than a, than a, than a risotto. Yeah, you know, al dente, will... like they say. Al dente, and you will give the juice slowly, slowly, slowly. So next, I will add the, the, orzo. the orzo pasta. Up. I will start with two spoons. I like the orzo not to be very cooked. Yes, little, little bit al, al, al dente. Yeah. A, a click little more than al dente. And as soon as the orzo, the pasta, drink all the, the juice, up. You add more. We add more. Right. So now you leave it over there? Exactly. We'll cook, I will put a little bit of salt now, mm -hmm. but we will see the seasoning at the end with the cheese, etc. Ah, it smells so You see the smell? It's, 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 it's amazing. So now the time that it's cooking, 
We will clean the langoustin. We remove the head. They are so fresh. You crack it. C'est magnifique. How's my French? Excellent. Oh! A little bit of olive oil. Just a touch. I will put a little bit of fresh oregano just to give a little bit of flavor. We will put some salt, salt. on our langoustin. A little bit of fresh pepper. Up. We will put our langoustin. Look at, look at this. You are superb. Look at this. Look at this beauty. And the langoustine, what is very important, don't overcook it. It's almost better when it's a little bit undercooked. Don't overcook the fish or the langoustine because they will become rubbery and we don't want that. We want all the freshness in our mouth. And I will do a little bit of, of lime. The lime zest, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now you can add maybe a, just a More? pinch of olive oil. Okay. That's enough. Excellent, excellent, yes. Excellent. Excellent. And I, I think we are close. Yes, we are. So now, I will re a little bit of mm -hmm. fresh tomato, so we give you a little bit of freshness now. Mm -hmm. A little bit of fresh tomato. And then maybe the lemon juice? Lemon juice, so you can. Tell me, that's enough? A little bit more? Yes, it's OK. I like. Yes, me too. You have a sweet from the bisque, and also the lemon gives this a bit of sour, and that's the difference. I will add a little bit of chives. OK. And now we will finish with a little bit of this. Naxos cheese. Exactly. <laughs> Look at this. Thank you. Look at this. So now... Come on, chef, I want to eat. <laughs> Let's go. OK. And this vessel is beautiful. Yes, yes. And look, we will finish now with the langoustine. I can't wait. The last touch, lime, and Can we will with finish... With a bit of cheese. A little bit of cheese and yeah, a touch and of olive oil, olive oil yes, of course. Olive oil is always. Enjoy. Of course I'm going to. You know, the lime and the lemon. Give you the freshness yeah. at the end. I didn't expect so. Let me get only the orzo. Al dente. Your ears. A click little bit more than al dente. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're French and you're not Greek? <laughs> so, thank you. It's my really. pleasure. It, it was really my pleasure. No, really, thank you. I, it, it was my best time here ever. It's not only the view, it's the people the service that you have here, the food. Thank you. Remember, we are here to answer your questions live. So ask away. I love Lagustine, but it's not always easy to find at your local market, but don't worry. You can still bring a piece of grease to your kitchen table. I am going to show you how to make a dish with something that is much easier to find, shrimp. What do we have? Onion. Of course, we're Greeks. Remember, don't cut it like this. You cut it on a cutting board. I've learned this from my grandma, and I practice a lot. You don't need a lot of onion in here. And if you don't like onion, you like garlic, or both, you can add it. Then you add some lemon juice. Olive oil. So.
salt. Baby tomatoes, you can get cherry, grape, whatever you like. Set. Then I will add the shrimp. I made a bed so your shrimp can lay on that. There are so many different options when it comes to choosing shrimp. Should you buy fresh or frozen? Both are good. What is important is how they smell. They should smell like the ocean, not fishy or like ammonia, and make sure that they are no preservatives, okay? Buy shrimp in the shell. Uh, it will protect the meat, and you can use the shells as well to make stock or sauces. Shrimp and other seafood do not need a lot of time to cook. Did you see here? I have the shrimp on ice, I clean them, but I put a plastic film between the shrimp and the ice because the ice, it burns the flesh of the shrimp. Always keep it separate from the ice, okay? So, I will add some more tomato. I like it, it's beautiful. Oregano. Or any other herb you like. Before we go to the oven, one more round of olive oil. Fresh pepper. No salt in the shrimp. They come with their own salt from the ocean. That's why. See? You will know when the shrimp is done, they will turn opaque and pinkish. In a pan, it will take only one or two minutes. But in the oven, it needs four or five minutes. Preheated oven, 350 to 400. And here we have it. See? Ready. Magical. I love my orzo. I will serve this shrimp over. Like lagustine, shrimp is full of protein. The jus of the shrimp can go directly into the orzo, give a lot of flavor. In Greece, we use a lot of feta cheese. I will add some olive oil and then I will eat it. I love it. The creamy, the tart of the feta, it goes perfect with the shrimp. And the tomato. In Greece, we don't use a fork and a knife. We just eat the shrimp like this. <laughs> Thank you for joining me again today. I hope our dishes have inspired you to start cooking Mediterranean in your own kitchen. You can change your life. I changed mine. I want to share these culinary secrets with everyone because it's more than just about good food. It's also a way of living. This is what we believe at the life of Loy. Yasu! Yes,